Greetings! Welcome to my channel. My name is Nightbird and I'm a big fan of Planet Zoo and also fan of the animals. So join me on this video of building a habitat for the proboscis monkey while learning animal fun facts about these interesting primates. In this part we have returned to my franchise zoo in Southeast Asia, the Hunzu Lore Lindu, where we will now build a habitat for our third animal. The proposes monkey, with the scientific name of Nasalis larvatus, belongs to the Old World monkey family. Within this the Colobinae subfamily, in which it is the only species of the Nasalis genus. Previously this species was classified in the Semnopithecus genus, which is also a member of the Colobinae subfamily, in other words, leaf-eating monkeys. The proboscis monkey is an endemic species of the island of Borneo, meaning that it lives only on this island in the whole world. With its 743,330 square kilometers, Borneo is the third largest island on Earth, and it is shared by three countries, so it can be said that the proboscis monkey lives in the territory of Indonesia, Malaysia and Brunei. In the Middle Ages, Borneo was still a single territory, controlled by the Brunei Empire, but after the appearance of the Europeans it was defeated and divided. Brunei regained its independence in 1984, but its territories remained small. Only in the northern part of the island there are two separate parts, a total of 6,765 square kilometers. The proboscis monkey is a large species, one of the largest in Asia from the Old World monkey family, which does not include hominids and gibbons. Its size can only be rivaled by some of the grey langurs and the Tibetan macaque. It shares its territories with the Bornean orangutan and the silvery lutang. Theoretically it has two subspecies. The nominal subspecies Larvatus was described in 1787 by the German Friedrich von Wurm and the Orientalis which was described in 1940 by the English Frederick Nutter Chasen. I said theoretically as practically these subspecies are not officially recognized. Expressed sexual dimorphism can be observed between the two sexes. The males are larger, their head body length is between 66 and 76 cm. Their weight is on average between 16 and 22 kg, with a maximum of 30. While the head body length of the females are between 53 and 62 cm and their weight is only between 7 and 12 kg, with a maximum of 15. The difference between the two sexes is further increased by the large nose of the males, from which the species got its name. Because in the case of the males the nose can exceed 10 cm and hangs beyond the mouth. Various theories suggest that the size of the nose increases the volume of the call towards the females, as females prefer louder calls. In other words, the one who sings in a stronger nasal tone will be the chosen one. According to other theories, the size of the nose is a symbol of status. It is certain that in the case of males, this is a real girl magnet. Males have special nasal cartilages in their skulls that support their large noses. Although the nose of females is much smaller than that of males, it is still quite large among primates. Their color on their back can be orange, reddish brown, yellowish brown or brick red, while the ventral side is grayer, mixed with yellow orange. Interestingly, the face of the newborns are blue and turn gray at two and a half months, then turn to cream at eight and a half months. Several of their toes have webbing between them, as they are particularly good swimmers and they love to swim. They have adapted to their habitat, living on the banks of rivers and close to the ocean. 
They can be found in dense mangrove, riverine, palm and freshwater swamp forests, rubber forests and rubber plantations, in limestone hill forests, tropical swamp forests and steep cliffs, and strictly near water, meaning at a maximum distance of 1 km from water. In fact, among the primates, the proboscis monkey has the greatest need for water and is an excellent swimmer, even able to swim down to a depth of up to 20 meters. Being an arboreal monkey, sometimes even the whole group jumps into the water at the same time from the branches of tall trees, even from a height of 15 meters and can swim across rivers. On land it walks on all four legs, on trees it's jumping from one to another. Proboscis monkeys usually live in groups. A group consists of an adult male, its harem, and their offspring. Or they form bachelor teams, but some males can even live alone. These bachelor teams vary in size from 3 to 19 individuals. The territories of the teams overlap, they are not territorial defenders. The groups relax during the day and gather at the common sleeping place at night. Occasional groups can also be formed when individuals separate from elsewhere, but at the same time new groups can be formed solely for mating and grooming. During the day several groups can join to form larger groups with even 60 monkeys, but in this case grooming and playing takes place only within their own groups. Aggression rarely develops between them, when it does it's only mild, and they are very tolerant with each other. There is a dominance hierarchy among the females of the group and males usually stay in a bachelor group only for at most 6-8 years. Males leave for such bachelor groups when they reach sexual maturity, but females do not always leave. Often they do, either to avoid inbreeding or to reduce competition for food, or just simply to be in a higher position among females in another group. In the northern part of Borneo, in the Malaysian state of Sabah, a troop was also observed where the proboscis monkey were mixed with silvery lutangs. Moreover, mating and possible hybridization have been observed between them. The researchers believe that this may have happened because, in order to increase the oil palm plantations, deforestation greatly reduced the areas along the river, thus they were forced to share the remaining territory with each other. Based on some observations, the breeding season takes place between February and November, so the births take place between March and May. The gestation period is between 166 and 200 days, but it can be a little more. Only one offspring is born each year. It is uh, interesting that the already pregnant females, just like others, also practice the mating rite for fun. Birds take place mainly at night and early dawn. The young are already eating solid food at the age of 6 weeks, and weaning occurs at the age of 2 months. The newborn can be carried by anyone from the group. The nose of young males grows slowly until adulthood. When a male is replaced in a troop, even though the male exchange is peaceful, the new male tends not to tolerate the young offspring of the old male. Their communication includes several sounds and body signals. In the case of males, honking sounds with different meanings emerge from their large noses. Among them there is a threatening, alarming but also soothing voice towards newborns. The proboscis monkey is mainly a herbivore. Its uh, diet consists mainly of leaves and fruits, but it also eats seeds, flowers and insects. They eat 55 different plants in some form, but among them there are a few that they prefer. It prefers to eat fresh leaves and the less ripe fruits are preferred over overripe ones. They have seasonal diet. 
Between January and May they prefer to eat fruits, while from June to December they prefer to eat leaves. Their daily activities consist of travel, foraging and feeding, resting and guarding. Occasionally they re-chew the regurgitated food. I mean, they don't hold to such saying that I can also eat this once. There are many types of bacteria in their large bellies. Their role is to ferment food and these bacteria neutralize some of the poisons from the leaves that serve as their food. Uh, leaves which would kill other animals. Their natural enemies include crocodiles, such as the false gharials or the saltwater crocodiles, the sunder clouded leopards, the sun bears, the reticulated pythons, especially the young ones can be taken by various birds of prey and local representatives of the genus Varanus. In order to avoid predators, they tend to swim through the narrow part of the rivers or if possible, jump over trees to the other side. Although I have listed many of their potential enemies, for a long time the proboscis monkeys were not considered endangered. However, as human civilization developed, so did the living space of proboscis monkeys disappear. And uh, as untouched areas have become accessible and processable through technology, the number of these primates also started to decrease dangerously in the recent period. In the last 40 years their population has halved, which is why the proboscis monkey is currently classified as endangered on the red list of the International Union for Conservation of Nature. It is also listed in Sites Appendix 1. Their way of life has so far been less studied, as they have lived in almost inaccessible places, and they die quickly in captivity. The largest wild populations live in the Indonesian part of the island called Kalimantan. Much fewer individuals live in the states of Sarawak and Sabah, belonging to Malaysia and the Sultanate of Brunei. They are protected by law in all regions of Borneo, but uh, this does not mean complete safety for them, although they can also be found in a total of 16 protected areas of the island. While these interesting primates live happily in my in-game zoo, those living in the wild struggle with a lot of problems every day, and I hope they will survive the continuous deforestation. Thank you for being with me in this video as well. Don't forget to press the like button. If I get 20 likes on this video, I will create a voting on YouTube for viewers to choose the next presented animal. If you have already subscribed, thank you. If not, don't forget to do so. Check out my other videos as well, even the Hungarian ones might have English subtitles. If not, they will have. You can also check out my speed builds. I am uploading my habitats to the Steam Workshop. Feel free to use them if you'd like. You can join my Discord, the link is in the description and on my channel. And there we can discuss about Planet Zoo and its animals. Oh, and check out my Nybird animation at the very end. Thank you for watching. Have a lovely day.